Why, hello there. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, welcome back. Glad you made it. It's another social production. Oh shit, we're doing it again. It's Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Glad you made it. We're doing it. Where can you find these videos? If you've been with me from the get go, you know what it is. It drops every Wednesday and Friday for the time being because things always evolve. Where can you find these videos? On Instagram, follow me there if you like. Subscribe on the YouTube channel if you'd like to support the show and catch it in full length. If you'd like to fiscally, financially support the show, check out patreon.com slash Rob Sadri. Once again, it's Wednesdays and Fridays. Sip, sip to the gang over here, wherever you're tuning in from. Let's get a sip of this bad boy right here first. Mm. Freshly squeezed coffee beans for your boy. Grinded coffee beans for your boy. Hope you're doing well, wherever you're tuning in from. If you're tuning in from Canada, Wagwan, everybody, down south in the United States. Thank you, Mexico, South America, Argentina, Peru, over there in Africa, Nairobi. Hello, Senegalese people. What's going on in Cote d'Ivoire? Over there in Europe, over there in Finland, over there in Sweden. And uh, uh, what's going on over there in Italy? Hello, my Portuguese friends. Uh, what's going on in the Middle East? What's going on over there in Lebanon? Hello, uh, what's going on over there in uh, uh, the, 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 the United Arab Emirates? What's going on? To, hello to my Australian people over there in the, in the bushes and in the, in the, in the down under. And uh, Australians, New Zealanders, Papua New Guinea. Been hearing some stuff's been going down in Papua New Guinea as per usual. If you're running low on skirts, if you're running low on grass skirts, if that's what's bought, it's... I got you. Somebody send grass skirts to my Papua New Guinea's people if they like some. If that's, I don't know, I've just been hearing lots of stuff is going on. I, it's, it's been, I'm, I'm excited to be alive, excited to be kicking amongst you guys because every day is precious. And because I feel like, again, I feel like as always, it's a privilege to, to you know, to be existing on this little blue marble, aka the, the, the floating blue marble. Aka planet Earth, it's it's a privilege. So it's it's nice to be experiencing all this, and you want to give back. And where can you get more? Where this is where this is where this is where shit goes. Oh man, this is where you get stuff. Freshly squeezed pussy cum bubbles, right here, dude. Pussy cum bubbles, freshly squeezed. Nowhere else gives it to you. Your boy gives it to you. Where can you find these videos that gives you freshly squeezed? Pussy cum bubbles right here on the Glad You Made It podcast on the show. Nowhere else. Others are mere imitators. You might be, oh, I'm getting freshly squeezed pussy cum bubbles. No, you're not, dude. They're not freshly squeezed. They're not even real cum bubbles. They're not even real puss. But here, from table to farm to farm to table, all the way around the circle, round and round we go, baby. Up and down, we, we serve it. Spoonful right here in your mouth. You're welcome. Freshly squeezed pussy cum bubbles for the gang. Fellas, ladies, buckle up, buckle down. It's gonna be, man, we, it's, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday and we're just having fun. There's so many things to discuss, so many exciting stories are unraveling in and around the planet. That's what we do around here. Again, if it, I, I do have to remind everybody because we, we are a tiny little grassroots little, you know, just starting off independently doing things on our own, wanting to expand, wanting to grow. So if you're like, what, what do you talk about? Everything and nothing. The personal and the impersonal, the stuff that concerns us is and the stuff that doesn't concern us, the stuff that, but all of it concerns us and none of it concerns us at all at the same time. So that's, that's what we do. So sip, sip to you guys. Thank you. Wipe your mouth from that freshly squeezed pussy cum bubble and let's, let's have some fun. So let's start right off the bat. I'll say this. I'm in if you're in. We're in if you're in. What am I talking about? Urine. No, you're in. I'm in, but like you're in. I'm I'm in if you're in. And you're in if I'm I'll say this. We're talking about piss right here. We're talking about that, you know, fermented H2O. We're talking about that liquid human gold. We're talking about that, you know, uh some call it the youth elixir. We're we're talking about that. Yella Mella. We're talking about urine. What's it good for? Aside, you know, it's, I don't know what it really does. I think it's when your body takes in water and other liquids and breaks it down. And then what, whatever comes out is urine. 
Well, that's the thing. We just toss it away. The willy nilly. Oh, I don't need this. Oh, take it. Take it. Get out of here, urine. Get out of here, urine. You'll say that. Oh, you just whizzing all willy nilly, free giving it away. But guess what? Guess what? Scientists and myself include, because that's what I do. I'm, I'm involved in a lot of projects. Some more directly than others. Some of them are right there, knee deep in the project. Some of them so far away from it that you might not even see a trace of your boy, but bet your bottom dollar I'm there if it's going out, son. Ladies and gents, urine. No, urine. Scientists have discovered that you could use piss to actually formulate a solvent which will help extract precious, my precious metals from EV batteries such as cobalt. So if you were wondering, if you're like out there, you're like, oh man, what can I do to help extract precious minerals in the recycling process of EV batteries? Well, look no further than your toilet bowl. Look no further than your, uh, your, your wild night last Saturday. You know what I'm talking about? Instead of taking the bed sheets to the dry cleaner, why don't you extract that urine for yourself put it in a solvent, extract some cobalt from EV batteries. Next thing you know what, you're making bank. Next thing you know what, you're helping the economy. Next thing you know what, you're, you're greener already, son. So that's one of the things that we could be doing. So don't be, don't be going out there just from now on. If you're pissing, keep it in a jar. I have multiple jars around now. That's what I got from it. Essentially, they're telling us, we're telling each other because we're, we're it's, it's all, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a team effort. You're telling me, that urine can be used to extract precious metals in the recycling process of EV batteries. So yes, of course, we're still going to have to mine for certain metals and minerals and whatnot, but that's one other method that we could extract already extracted and already mined minerals. So the next time you're like, man, is this EV battery has been in my car for like five years. Oh, what am I going to do? I wonder what I'm going to do. Dude, go to your garage. You're like, I don't have a garage. Drive your car somewhere really far, really far, so that you're not, you know, within the vicinity of people, good people. These are good people. Once you, once you find, maybe, maybe, maybe find like a, a distant farmland, a distant little, you know, piece of land that's just out there in the outskirts of the city. Pull over, take out the batteries of your car, start pissing on it. I think that's how you extract piss, and I don't know what the other. You know, I don't know what's in the formula. I don't know what's, uh, what other things are in the solvent, but piss is a good, piss is the key ingredient is what I'm getting. So you start pissing on them batteries. If them batteries have been juiced out, you're like, man, batteries, I gotta tell you, I don't know what to do with it. How do I recycle? You do it by pissing on your car, essentially. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I read. That's what I got out of it. So from now on, instead of wasting precious piss, precious urine, please keep it in jars. Keep it in Ziploc bags. I don't care if it leaks. The majority of it will, yeah, it's got a little, the Ziploc bag has a little hole, okay? It didn't close properly, it's leaking. A little, yeah, people are smelling it on you, but do we wanna be a little bit greener? Do we wanna help the recycling process? I think we're all on the same page here. So if you're in, I'm in, and if I'm in, you're in, dude. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, we're doing it together. Thank you for all this. So you got save up your piss, piss on your car batteries, and that's how we save the world, one step at a time. One teeny tiny golden shower at a time. That's, that's next time you have a bukkake stash. Next time piss is just flying over your shoulder, hitting you in the eye socket, dude. Instead of getting annoyed, instead of being, oh, Larry again. Thank Larry. Thank Joanna, because she keeps hydrated. So if you're ladies, Run into the bathroom, left, right, and center. You know, it might have been like, oh man, I need to make a pit stop during this long drive to wherever land. Thank your lucky stars. She's fully, she's ready to go. Mm. Sips up to the gang. What else is going on in and around this beautiful planet? Is it, do you like wolves? Do you like your, do you like wolves? Do you like, you know, them bad bitches that are still feral? Them, uh, them's with the, the canines that are rabbit. We're talking about wolves, son. Do you like wolves? What if I told you I'd give you stronger, better wolves? What if I gave you wolves that were kind of like zombie wolves? Do you like zombie wolves? Do you like zombies and wolves? Do you like cancer? Let me ask you this. If you are into cancer and you're like, I want to beat it. I want to beat cancer is what you say. Well, guess what? Apparently, 
after 40 years of the since the Chernobyl accident, a nuclear accident in Chernobyl that went kaplow and then nuclear oozed everywhere. After 40 years, we've been noticing again as a scientific community together. We've noticed some of us are more attentive, so they noticed first, but others picked up on it soon after. It doesn't matter who picked up on it. The fact of the matter is that we picked up on it. Apparently, these wolves that were just roaming around and Chernobyl exposed to nuclear elements and everything in that area has been exposed. We're talking about plants, bugs, animals that just, just scurry and still eat the plants and those. So everything's radiant. But after 40 years, apparently there's a plus side. Apparently there's a positive. These wolves have evolved mutant wolves, some might say. Pointing fingers. They're like, oh, gross, mutant wolves. Those are so gross, dude. But guess what? They're now cancer resistant. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Together, you know, the, sometimes the world throws you a little bit of radiation. And all of a sudden, everyone's up in arms. Everybody's just freaking out. Oh, my God, my kid's coming out with extra teeth on his forehead. Oh, my God. My daughter has gills. Oh, my God. I'm growing a tail. Oh, always, you know, negative, negative, negative. But look at the positives, ladies and gents. I think we have found one method to combat cancer. So if you're into cancer, if you're into wolves, if you're into radiation, put the three into one and you get yourself radiant wolves who fight cancer. Now extract that, extrapolate it. I think we're onto something here. What I got from this, that if you wanna beat cancer, radiation is the way to go. Make a trip to Chernobyl, go to Fukushima, Drink some of that oceanic water that they've, you know, released a little bit of that cleansed water, quote unquote, cleansed, whatever that means, treated water, you know what I mean? Next thing, you know, 40 years, by the time, if you're like 40 right now, by the time you're 80, and that's when cancer starts creeping around, dude, you're already fucking anti-resistant, dude. You're, you see cancer, you're like, ah, not here, son. You start glowing in the dark. Hell yeah, dude, it's working. So I think... The way to beat cancer is with cancer. That's what I got from that article. From now on, if you see nuclei, if you see uranium, if you see plutonium bars hanging around, just, oh, we're just having a chit chat in the lunchroom at the local plutonium plant. Here we, oh, here we only deal with, and, oh, here, catch this plutonium bar. Don't, oh, hot potato, hot potato. It's a plutonium bar. Make sure it doesn't drop. I don't know it dropped. There's so many fumes in this room. It's getting hard to breathe. Taking a deep breath taking as many breaths as you can. They used to tell you step away. They used to tell you wear hazmat suits. That's so fucking 2023, dude. If you wanna be fighting cancer, if you wanna be anti-fungal, anti-resistant, everything, if you wanna be like a wolf that's basically like really tough and scary, but also anti-cancer, uranium's the answer, I think. I'm not gonna go out on the limb and say it's the only answer, but we're making strides. I have also heard there are Apparently we're making vaccines. We're really close apparently to making vaccines for cancer. Again, I don't know what this is all about. I don't know if this is just big pharma getting in there doing this little thing, trying to make bank, but also one way could be medicine. Another could be just free exposure. So next time there's a little bit of a meltdown at a nuclear facility. Next time there's a little place that a couple of things went off. Instead of saying, oh, we got to pack up, sweetheart. We got to get the kids and the cats and the pets and the goldfish and we got to get out of here. We got to scrap quick. Wait a minute. Think before you react. Ask yourself, am I working? Am I, am I mobilizing from a place of love or fear? And if it's fear, fucking fight it. Sit down. Take a bite out of the ground. If, it's, if the uranium's oozed into the ground, if it's seeped into the soil, get a, get a, get a, little, get a little spade and just, just put handful, just handful of just uranium filled enriched with uranium soil in your mouth put it in all the orifices and again in 10 20 30 40 years we we can pretty much have anti-cancer babies anti anti-resistant cancer babies resistant babies resistant cancer babies babies who resist whatever dude something's going on with the uranium and the plutonium and it's not all bad is all i got from that so from now on if it's glow in the dark, get really close. Ladies and gentlemen, saving ourselves, saving the world one step at a time, doing it together. Thank you, boy and girls. Let's get a step of this this Wednesday and we're having fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe vaginas should have corners. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm saying puss should have corners. That's what I'm saying. I'm putting it out on the table. Hear me out here. I just finished, like many of you guys and gals out there, watched the UFC 298 over this uh, past weekend on Saturday. Went down to Poria, Wolkanovski, hell of a fight. Kapow, kapow, pow, 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 all that jazz. So many great fighters. Shout out to everybody. I love the I love the action. It's phys and again as you age, it's 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 past me. It's now it's definitely past me. I can't, oh, you gotta hang up the gloves. So any 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 rubber I got on me, whether made for my fist or for my cock, I am hanging it up. All right, fine. The ones made for my fist, hanging it up. All right, fine. I never had any rubber or gloves for my fist, but I'm hanging them up metaphorically. The ones for my cock, I am keeping in a safe cupboard for a rainy wet day. A rainy, wet, soaking day. But that's neither here or there. What I'm trying to say is that I noticed, like many of you guys enjoying the action, you notice what, what does it take? What, what is behind every successful fighter? What is behind every successful uh, human that is bleeding, oozing from a gash, a corner, a tight corner, somebody out there, so you got a coach, you got a fellow with a bucket, you got, a, you got another fellow with a with a piece of iron just like sticking it on your face trying to push and squeeze like blood clots all over your face so you don't you know so you, your your eye can stay open so you can see what's in front of you fam don't look behind you man always eyes in the front don't look at the past man look at the present and the future fam that's what they say i think but i notice all these people who are bleeding but are also successful in life have corners that's why i'm implementing corners for all puss put it out there ladies and gentlemen let's manifest it together all puss get corners from now on now, I'm not talking about 90 degree angles. It wouldn't hurt. I'm not saying things would if, man, couldn't we all use a little bit more 90 degrees in our lives? But I'm talking about next time you ladies, who's looking out for you? Freshly squeezed cum bubbles from the puss. This guy's looking out for you. Next time you're on your uh, time of the month. Next time off flow is visiting. Next time you're, you're just like, oh, it's oozing blood out here. It's, I'm squirting out blood out of my badge. Next time, get yourself a corner Couple of fellas with, uh, you know, uh, lubes, with, uh, with handfuls of Vaseline rubbing it on the lips. Another fella coming in there, oh, we can't be losing blood like this. Just pressing down on the pussy lips and just like with a piece of iron metal or something. Just, oh, you, you stay focused. We can't keep losing blood like this. Stay focused. You got this. Three more days. Three more days. Eyes on the prize, champ. Eyes on the prize. That's what I say. So corners for badges and pusses. I'm putting it out there. You're welcome. Doing it together, gang. Doing it together. What else is going on in and around this beautiful planet? I'll say this. Let me get a sip of this before we move on. Mm. Brian Johnson, an American tech entrepreneur, an American tech businessman, fascinated by fighting death. This guy likes to fight death and other things too. He's a tech entrepreneur who likes to fight death. He sees death and he stares death in the eye and says, no death. Not today, and not tomorrow either. It definitely was yesterday wasn't your day. <laughs> Looking back, last week wasn't your day either, death. <laughs> Looking at the past month, death, you've been missing out. Looking at the past couple of years, death, you can't touch this guy. So he's out there fighting death every day, each and every day, with all his might, with all his will. Brian Johnson is fighting age and death, which, which are like fucking partners, age and death. That's, so he's fighting the good fight. And it got me excited because I read an article and this guy's going all out. He's... Oh man, he's doing all sorts of things, which we hopefully one day could extract. I'm, I'm, I'm reading all this. I'm getting excited because like it, one portion of me definitely does appreciate the fight, not the finiteness of life. The, the thing that kind of makes it like, it's one of the things that makes life precious that we know it's, it's finite or, or, or is it though? Or is it though? Or is it though? Is it, is it though? Is it? Could we be pushing at least extending our life longevity, or our capacity to live long? Could we push the envelope? We certainly have been doing it, and we certainly can keep pushing forward one step at a time. And this guy's been doing it. He's reverse aging. I believe he wants to become a fetus. Brian Johnson, may the, may the force be with you. May you turn into a fetus if that's what your little heart desires. Uh, so th th it's exciting because you can do definitely you, you do different things. One of the things that you guys can do too that this guy's doing that's working for him. Now I know a lot of it has to do with like access to resources, but other things that we could extrapolate. And man, once we scale this shit, 
everybody can have access to longevity and just live into like 2000 years old. Just people just fucking sitting around and just, or jumping around like little fetuses, just lively, strong fetuses with, you know, just, just life. Just, mm. So you can find so one of the things that this guy is doing. We'll start with the basics, the things that you and I could do, the, the things that some of us are already doing, things that others might have been doing for some time already, sleeping alone, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, one of the life hacks that this guy is implementing into his life, and he's reverse aging, has been working. He's, he's fought baldness. He's fought grayness. That's grayness. Grayness, not gayness. Grayness, he's fighting grayness, going gray. He's reversed it. He's rever or maybe he's reversed I'm pretty sure it's grayness, dude, but look into yourself. So he's fighting ageism and he's fighting grayness. Or was it greatness? Either gayness, greatness, or greatness. One of the, one of the, he's fighting it. He's fighting a strong, all right, ladies and gentlemen. He sleeps alone, exposes himself to LED lights, full body LED exposure. He's not exposing himself. He might be exposing himself, dude. I don't know. He might be. Doesn't look like I, then again, I don't know the fella, but from what I understand, he's exposing himself to full body LED. What else does he do? Micro needling, micro needling, get in there, get a, get a, get a tiny little, get a tiny little squirrel, give him tiny little needles and let him stab you in the face. Uh, can't find a squirrel, they're too feisty. Get a, get a, you got a pet at home, right? You got a little chihuahua, you got a little shih tzu, you got a little, you got a little fluff, you got a little fluffy cat. Hand them needles and let them, let them go to town with my, because it needs to be micro. So my understanding is that it needs to be applied by things that are tinier than us, which are animals and babies. Do you have a baby? Give them needles and let them stab you like about, I don't know how much you're supposed to let the babies stab you with the needles, but it's micro needles, first of all. So calm down. <laughs> and they're babies. How, str how strong is a baby, dude? So give your babies needles, let them stab you in the face or any other body part that you want to be youthful. You don't want to have, you know what? Retract that. <laughs> I apologize. Got ahead of myself. Let the baby stab you all over the place. Don't just focus on the face. Because if you go micro needling with a tiny little, you know, your, your baby, you, you don't have a baby. What about a niece or a nephew or a cousin who's got a baby? You borrow them, give them a needle and let them stab you all over the body. Because you don't want to, again, just focus on the face. Face starts anti-aging face starts looking 25 30 18 all of a sudden your body though from fucking neck down looks 97 <laughs> oh you want to make people gag i don't think so so hand babies needles and let them go to town with that micro needling uh what else is he doing he is taking around 100 supplements a day that's another thing that we could all be doing so i want you to go to your medicine cabinet right now grab all the medicine in your medicine cabinet it didn't, the article did not say what he's taking. All it said was, oh, that's all I'm just sharing. It's just set up to a hundred, maybe even more supplements. And what I get from supplements, supplements means pills in my brain. So go to your medicine cabinet right now. You don't have one. What about a neighbor? What about an aunt? What about an uncle? Visit them. It's been so long. Grandma, grandma's got the goods. Open up the medicine cabinet, find about a hundred pills. Get a glass of water because water is also another state. Stay hydrated guys. Get all the medicine from your grandma's medicine cabinet. Make sure it's around 100 and make sure she's got plenty to replenish on because this is a daily routine, 100. Start swallowing all, the, all those pills. Blood sugar levels, elevate them, lower them if need be. Uh, glucose levels, monitor that shit. Uh, you know, your thyroid pills, take that. Get, some, get something for your head. Get something, get all of, get, what I'm trying to tell you is get your hands on many supplements and shove them in your face and your anus, put it up your ass, put it up your badge. As long as you're taking in 100, at least hundred supplements a day, you could too be on your way to start anti-aging anti right now. So don't, don't, don't look at your resources or what you have access to. Look at what's around you. What else could you be doing? Blood transfusions, fam. Blood transfusions, uh, start small. Uh, you know, I would suggest you, you're like, how do I get access to blood? I think it's in your body. So what I would, what I would suggest is I would use what I have 
on my person first and then, and then I would probably outsource it elsewhere. So what I would do is I would probably, next time you fall down and scratch your, scratch your kneecap, next time you bump a toe on a corner of a coffee table, God damn it, again, and it starts bleeding. Instead of whining about it, instead of calling in sick, instead of, instead of crying over it, put your toe in your mouth and start sucking. Start sucking. Oh my God, I was washing the dishes and this, this dishwasher detergent is so slippery. The knife slipped and it cut my palm. Oh my God, I'm bleeding from the palm of my hand. What am I to do? T typically in 2023, like cavemen, we used to try to put a bandage over it, wash it with cold water, hold it up so that the blood starts stop. You, you hold it up to stop the bleedage? No, you hold it down. What, you hold it, you, you hold it level. You hold your hand out there. But, it, but that, that, was that was 2023, bitch. We're in 2024. You, you put the palm of your hand in your fucking mouth. Now you start sucking on that shit. And now you're recycling blood transfusion, fam. So you're getting, and again, if you don't have access, you're like, man, I am not accident prone whatsoever. I've not had a cut since 97. Well, fucking start tripping, fam. Start tripping. And if you can, if you got really, what if you're like, man, I got a really good center of gravity. I, I can't even fall if, if I even tried. I've not fallen since I was a fetus. And I'm like, that is, you know, Guinness world record worthy, yes. But nonetheless, do you want that blood transfusion or not? So either trip, fall, bang your head, start bleeding, and then stick out your tongue, transfuse baby, or partner up with a female, them be bleeding quite often. So next time, again, you're looking around, again, people are always like, man, how do I get access to freshly squeezed? Pussy cum bubbles right here, but where can you get blood? Vag, dude, vag. Next time your lady is bleeding, let's go. Put it through. You know, maybe you're like, oh, but it's blood clot. I can't, you know, I can't drink blood clot. It makes me gag a little. Refine it. Collect a whole bunch of it. Purify it. Boil it. I don't know. Put it in a tea bag. Tea bag yourself with your lady's blood clot. And that is one method amongst all the other methods that I just mentioned that you two could implement to fight fucking age, dude, because it, it catches up to all of us. I don't want to see anybody hanging, no gloves, anytime. So that's what I say. Keep fighting a good fight. Shout out to Brian Johnson. Shout out to shout out to everybody else who's out there. Maybe there's but, but yes, and there are people who are doing it on the DL in Japan, in Greece, who are living to like 155. These freaks, <laughs> these beautiful freaks. What are they doing? Is it a diet? Is it a community? Is it just a shot of whiskey every night? What is it? Quenching your thirst with coffee. Freshly squeezed pussy cum bubbles for everybody. Ladies and gents, what else is going on in around the world? Man, I saw a beautiful project that's taking place in Georgia and I want this happening for everybody. Talk about Georgia down south in the United States. Beautiful city. Population 14,000. Guess what they're getting? They are getting a monkey city. Monkey city is being built in Georgia and they're gonna place 30,000 monkeys. A beautiful giant pharmaceutical company is gonna be doing research on monkeys and this town of 14,000 people is gonna be getting 30,000 monkeys. So that is basically two monkeys per person, which is basically every young man and woman's dream. Didn't you all grow up at around, I don't know, five, six, 11, 15, 25, 35, 47, 58, 61, 70. Ripe old age of 80. And didn't you always want a monkey or two? Well, guess what? City of Georgia's getting them. Why? Because the scientific research, that's why. So if you were like, man, what do I do to get the municipality to get, get us some monkeys? Write a letter to your local congressman. Write a letter to your local councilwoman or man. Write a letter asking for monkeys. Because if you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't get, you're not asking. If 
If you're not getting this, keep keep asking. If you're like, I've asked, but I, did you ask some more? Maybe they didn't, they didn't hear you the first time. Maybe your handwriting's terrible. Maybe type it out. Maybe make a phone call. Maybe write a letter. Maybe get other neighbors to write a letter. Beautiful. Next thing, you know what? Two monkeys per individual in the city just fucking flicking feces, dude. Doing science, getting chipped, probably with something, coming up with all sorts of diseases and then f- creating other d- vaccines to fight the diseases. Hell yeah, everybody's dream is coming true. You get a monkey, but not just one, two monkeys, dude. And I want that for our city. I want that for every major city in and around the world. It could go horribly wrong. It could, there are pros and cons to all this shit. With more monkeys, with, well, let's look at life with less monkeys, first of all. Uh, are there Chinese restaurants going, going down? Are, are the Chinese restaurants in your neighborhood going down because they cannot find enough staff to type up uh, fortune cookie letters or little messages because there's not enough people typing? Guess what? Replenished. A beautiful Chinese restaurant in your, in your neighborhood is safe because a beautiful monkey's now been trained with the help of Neuralink and other chips to sit there, do a little math, and write a hopeful little message, which is ambiguous enough, but also kind of relatable so that you're like, was it for me? And that'll kind of make your day for about 24 hours to 72 hours, depending on the message. Every once in a while, you'll get one that's kind of a downer, which will make you like, you know, question your life choices. But you got to mix it up, man. You can't just be all like positive reinforcement. You got to come in there with like the, you know, oh, this is a little bit of, we're throwing a little bit of a curveball. We're throwing a little bit of constructive criticism out your way. So maybe you can like improve yourself. So look out for your Chinese businesses out there with your beautiful Chinese restaurant and your Chinese food, which I love. So if they're going down, get a couple of monkeys. Uh, that's what I've been noticing. Uh, let's say, let's say that it's, it's expensive to find people to look after your children because daycare may be expensive and you're out there. It takes two parents to work five jobs these days in this economy. And you're like, man, how do I make ends meet? Uh, both of us have got to work and I cannot afford childcare or child service is or daycare for my baby. Get, get a couple of monkeys, get a couple of McKee monkeys, macaque, McKee, macaque, get a couple of monkeys, get a couple of long tailed, short tailed monkeys to watch over your babies. Between the ages of, I would say, finish breastfeeding first. Finish breastfeeding. As soon as you've done breastfeeding, I think everything else from the age of one to two, maybe two two to seven, a monkey could easily watch over your baby. So that's one thing that I see that we could potentially utilize. Uh, You're like homeless. The homeless are always wearing saggy pants and they are, you know, sometimes they're shitting in public spaces. What if we got a couple of monkeys to also shit and also maybe fight shit with shit, dude. Monkeys flicking feces at the homeless. You're like, that's not a solution. Well, at least I'm trying out here, fam. Write a comment if you'd like to see that happen. And, uh, you know, other things that we could be uh, utilizing these monkeys for outside of scientific research. If you're like, oh, I don't want to just do scientific research, you could have them on your shoulder. Ever try to scratch your own back? Ever look stupid and retarded in public because you made an attempt to scratch it? Just go ahead and try to scratch your back without looking retarded. I dare you. I dare you. You can't, can you? Scratch your back and maintain all sorts of normalcy, at least whatever normalcy is still remaining in your life. But have a little bit of composure. Have a little bit of dignity. Put a monkey on your back and let him scratch your back every once in a while. Do you want to, do you want to be, you know, do you want to be, uh, maybe you could start a little hu- side hustle. Maybe you already got a little le- lemonade stand, but what about a game of cups with a monkey on your shoulder? Think about that. Ooh, where's the ball? Where's the ball? And meanwhile, the monkeys grabbing all the bystanders wallets. The ball could be anywhere. You lost at most $5, but in reality, you gained probably around 400 bucks. But that is also a short lived little uh, endeavor because cash is evaporating right before our eyes, ladies and gentlemen. So this is quick. This is quick. You got to get on the monkey business now, man. Uh, That's what I think is happening. Utilize monkeys, not just for science, but for leisure, for family, for business, and maybe a little bit of pleasure. But also be careful because they use all the teeth. And you're like, that's what I like. When I'm getting head, I like only teeth. I give whoever's giving me head an extra pair of teeth. I give them dentures. I'm like, just use teeth. With monkeys, it's all teeth. All teeth. And this is not from experience. It's just, it's just a gut feeling. But it could all be yours. Think about that.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are you, let me, let me ask you this. Do you have what it takes? You're like, what? I'm asking you, do you have what it takes? You're like, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I do apologize. Welcome back. We had a technical glitch. We had a technical glitch, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens. This is what this is again. One man show, one man operation. Sometimes things get heated in here. Sometimes temperatures outside impact the temperatures inside. That's why it's, it's oh man, the camera got overheated. No problem. No worries. Your boy's back. Even better than whatever, dude. We're doing it, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. I hate having to cut in the middle. I don't like edits. You know, if if there's a need, if, if need be, we'll do like, you know, hardly ever any edits. And this is, I don't want it to be like, oh, why was there a cut in between it? Because the technical difficulties, the camera got overheated. But nonetheless, let's pick up where we left off. I lost around 10 minutes of recordage. No problem. We'll do it again. And it's a loose Wednesday. That's what happens. Shit happens in life. And shit happens in, uh, on Mars. I don't even know what we lost at this point. I had to go back and check. I believe, that's right. I believe I was getting started to ask you, do you have what it takes? Do you have what it takes to go up and, oh man, 10 minutes are good. Oh, it doesn't matter. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens. Let's just pretend. Let's just pretend it's never even happened, dude. I, this could happen easily to anybody. It's not, it could easily happen to any guy or female. You're like, man. My badge is all dried up. This doesn't happen to me. I'm mostly wet all the time. Or you're like, I have no problem getting my peen hard. I've never, you know, my, just give me five seconds. It'll get hard. And she's sitting there twiddling her thumbs. And it's just like any day now. But it can happen to the best of us, ladies and gents. It doesn't matter. Do you have what it takes? I'm, I'm looking for people between the ages of 30 to 55. I'm looking for people who are into, we're not... Not just me, I'm not looking into, I gotta say, this is, well, we lost a good 10 minutes. Let's just, let's just do this, dude. let's just go, oh man, okay, let's just do this then. Are you, are you familiar with NASA? Let's start, let's start there, shall we? Are you familiar with NASA? It's not NASA, it's NASA, because, because otherwise it would be NASL as a nasal spray, but it's, it's not nasal spray, is it? It's nasal spray. And, na and nasal came way before NASA did, so it's NASA, it's not NASA. Unless, unless we're pronouncing nasal incorrectly and it's nasal. You're like, that's an asshole if I've seen one. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, but nasal's looking for you. Uh, ladies and gents, between the ages of 30 to 55, we're looking for people who are into physics. People who look at uh, angles and shapes and sizes and uh, density and uh, propulsion. People who are good at, at figuring things out with their head and their, and their hands. Are you into biology? Are you into human cells? Are you into human... Uh, mm, mm, boys and girls, ladies and gents, if, you, if you're into biology, if you like flesh, if you like mitochondria, if you like the nucleus of a cell, then we're looking for you. If you are a chemist, because we need chemists, if you like getting your... Just one of those days, ladies and gents, just one of those days where the equipment is just working great with you, but just working. Just working with your boy today is just one of those days, ladies and gents. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's all right. I got this. You got this as well. And this is what happens, baby boy, baby girl. This is what happens because anything can happen on Mars. We're looking for you, fam. There it is. There it is. There it is. We're looking for chemists, we're looking for biologists, we're looking for physicists, we're looking for people who fizzle and sizzle. We're looking for computer scientists. We're, lo we're looking for people who are computers and scientists. And we're looking for four people. And you gotta again be between the ages of 30 to 55. And you cannot be a smoker. No smokers, only, only sniffers, 
only people who go intravenous, only people who, maybe you can do heroin, I'm not sure, maybe heroin's easier to get to Mars, but apparently they don't want smokers and they're lame because of it. Because guess what? You're missing out tons of good people who are mad, who are, and you're gonna need to smoke up there too. Ladies and gents, today is, today is Wacky Wednesday. That's what today is. Today is just testing your patience, ladies and gents. And if we've learned one thing on this show and other shows and in life in general, is that life is a game of patience. And th those with patience have the ability to withstand rain, withstand snow, withstand golden showers, withstand getting electrocuted, withstand just right about anything really. Boys and girls, ladies and gents, let us, let us not fret over small things. Let us not lose sight on what's ahead of us. And it's Mars. That's right. How much battery are we working with right now? Give me a second, ladies and gents. It, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, boys and girls. At this point, we're looking for people who are going to Mars. Let's try to wrap today's episode up uh, it's in a fashion that's never been wrapped before. God, we're looking for you, essentially. All, all I'm trying to say is that we're looking for four people, and if you like to get into underwear, if you like to wear rubber boots and stand in a river naked, if you like to see elements and expose yourself to the elements, if you're looking to potentially group up with three other individuals who are randos, but also be... Uh, uh, oh, man, this... Let me get a sip of this bad boy. What we're doing here, what we're doing in NASA, in Nasal, we're 3D printing a replica of Mars. And we need four people to go live here for about a year. And we're gonna test everything, their will, their willpower, their determination to survive, their willingness to take a sip of a friend's piss, because guess what? You're running low on water, you're running low on equipment, uh, willing to, oh man, I, I got a boo-boo on my, on my torso. I guess I'm going to be bleeding out here. What a waste of life. Uh, be willing to look at your friend who you just met uh, and after three months saying, hey, hey, Jim, mind if I take a bite out of your ribs because it's awful, awful dry out here on Mars and there's not much equipment or even resources and we, we finished the entire, you know, the, we, we finished all the food. There are no more energy bars. There are no more energy drinks. And, and since, you've got, you, since you've got a wound and you're bleeding from your torso and you're probably going to die, do you mind if I start nibbling on you right now? Or maybe the, maybe the nice thing, maybe the polite thing is for Jim to wait, wait for Jim to pass out. Wait for him to go into a coma. Wait for him to fall asleep and after you poked him with a stick, then start nibbling on Jim. These are the types of individuals that we're looking for to see if we can, we can go out there and do it up in Mars. Because in 2030 or at least 2040, 2050, come 2050, we're up there, bitch. So you better be ready, and we want to know if you got what it takes. So if you got what it takes, I don't know what it is exactly that it, that it takes for you to survive up there, but it probably entails wearing a uh, fishbowl over your head, and again, willing to fucking do doggy with almost anybody. So strap up, buckle up, let us know if you're prepared to go out there and do adventures that were never, that were never experienced before, and also it's going to be live. I believe we should live stream this. I believe we should bet money on we should bet money on these four individuals and see if they survive. We should also give them NDA agreements to sign so that they can't sue. We should also pay them, pay them a little bit of money, but not too much money because you got to be doing this with the, you got to be doing this shit for the love of the game, bitch. Uh, and yes, and you're gonna have equipment malfunctions just like the types that we had here on Earth. But guess what? You're not gonna be on uh, you're not on Earth anymore. You're gonna be on Mars, and when equipment malfunctions go down. There might not be any repairmen and women coming to the rescue. There might not be any helicopters coming to get you. Uh, there might be, you know, new species, new species coming in and saying, "Hey, oh, roar, new species!" And you're gonna be freaked out. There's not gonna be any source of reassurance from anybody else but your three amigos. So get prepared. Uh, be ready to scissor with anyone because close connections make a stronger team. And it's only four of you up there. Sip, sip to the gang, ladies and gents. It was a. Uh, it's a hell of a trip. That's, that's what this is. This is just us having fun. And sometimes shit happens when you're just having fun and you're working with the elements. So with that being said, uh, speaking of people falling into comas, I did hear that a 35-year-old woman has now awakened from her five-year coma, which is really great news. I heard it. 
uh, she fell into a coma, she got into a car accident. This is actually great news because most of the time people don't come out of long term. Chronic comas, you do a little bit of like, you know, you do 24 hour, 72 hour coma, you get rested, you come out, that's nice. But chronic comas, you know, there's a good chance that you're not coming out. But I got to read this article and I found out that it was, it was many elements that I, I wondered to myself, like what made her come out of her coma and other chronic coma consumers just want to stay in there and like, you know, fucking snooze. And it had a lot to do with many different factors. One, maybe her age. One, her own resiliency, uh, her mother's help, her sheer mother's will and desire to help her daughter uh, come through. Going there, talking to her, uh, getting her therapy, getting her all the, all the treatments that she needs. And it took a lot out of her. But after five years, this lady, I believe her first name is Jennifer. I can't, rem I can't remember her last name at this point. At this point, we've had so many malfunctions today that it's gonna, it's just whatever, it is what it is. So the point is that this lady came out of a coma. Uh, the downside of this is that she came out of a coma after five years. Could she have gone longer, maybe stay for another year, make it a six year coma and make it that much better or go even longer than that? Maybe maybe go on for 10 years and come out after 10 years. So J Jennifer, uh, congratulations to you and your family, super stoked, this is exciting. It did shed light on the fact that perhaps if we were to uh, have access to more resources and better uh, better pay for our nurses, our rehab centers, our medical facilities. That if we were all looking at this all like, oh, we're all in it, uh, like, you know, we're all in it together, like we're doing this together, we're in this together. If we treated each other with love, respect, a little bit of care, uh, and maybe if you see somebody that's hurt, maybe you wouldn't give them negative, uh, you know, news, tell them, be like, oh, that's a goner. Because a lot of times, Jen's mother heard a lot of news that might have been, you know, at first sight or at first glance, it might seem like negative, or maybe it's just maybe it's just a numbers game. Maybe there's just so many patients out there waiting to get treated that you you might write somebody off and be like, oh, that one's a goner. But in, in fact, if enough care, enough love, enough facilities, enough rehab, enough therapy, enough medication, enough treatment, enough hope, maybe there's hope for others to wake up from their comas. Maybe all uh, people who are like in love with comas could be like, you know what? Maybe I had enough. Maybe I'll come out of this. But uh, at the same rate, five years is quite a long time. Uh, do you know anybody who's been in a coma for a longer period of time? Are we, is that the longest that anybody's been in a coma and come out of it? Could we go longer? How long can we go in a coma and then still come out and be like, you know, we're, we're still functioning, which, which is pretty dope. Because coma is basically a, it's a long nap is what it is. A coma is basically a long nap. It's a, it's a long sleep. It's, you know, you're out of it. I don't wish it upon anybody unless that's somebody that's somebody that, you know, unless that's what they wish. If your heart desires it, then I want it for you. But... This this was this was a hopeful. This was a you know this was a little bit of a. It made me feel good because I'm like yes yes, you can come out of comas. Uh, first you got to go into a coma, so don't be like how do I you got to get in it first. Get in it for get in it. Don't be like I can't get in a coma first. Then you get to come out. But uh, yeah, uh, that is just to say that you know don't stop dreaming, uh, never give up. Uh, you know. And do things that are good for your health and whatnot. I, I don't even know what I'm saying at this point, but the point of this is to sip sip to the gang, ladies and gents. We'll we'll go out like this. Let's 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 go out on this note. We'll go out on this note. Uh, do you like infertility? Do you like uh, no wait? Do you like delayed puberty for your child? Do you like? Uh, you know, fetal delays. Do you like, do you like, you know, do you like your baby to have, you know, developmental issues, problems? Well, you're, you're just in, just in, you're in luck, fam. You're in luck. You know why? Because apparently there's a pesticide that's used in a lot of cereal and a lot of oat-based products that could give you this uh, free, you know, premature uh, births or whatever. I don't even remember at this point. Uh, Delayed development and puberty, uh, infertility issues. You get all of that by just consuming cereal and oat-based products and other processed foods. So if, if you were like, man, searching and you're like, man, I, I, I wish there was a way to get some breakfast and also uh, maybe be able to, to like have a, have a baby that's a little bit like, you know, just a little bit tweaking a little bit uh, or a baby that's a little bit late. Or, or, or maybe you wanted a little bit of a challenge. Maybe, you, maybe all your family members have had it really easy when it comes to having babies. Maybe, maybe as soon as they tried, they had babies. And you wanna be like, I want a challenge. Consume a lot of cereal. Consume a lot of processed foods. Consume a lot of oat-based uh, products, which is just 
just about in everything. So guess what? Pesticides are going to be helping you and your family give uh, childhood a run for its money. Give child rearing and birthing a run for its money. Make it so that your babies are delayed. Make it so that your babies are a little bit... Ooh, ooh. Make it so that your fetuses are, you know, out there doing things. So if you're like, man, regular birth, regular normal childhood and infancy, cool, but I want a challenge, consume a lot of cereal. Consume oat-based products. And that's something we stand by right here. Glad you made it. It's been another so-so production. Where can you get these wonderful videos? Where can you get your lifetime supply of freshly squeezed pussy cum bubbles? Right here for the entire gang. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for being a part of my life. Uh, on another note, I do want to end on this actually. I do want to say that it's, I, I've given this a little bit of thought myself. Uh, it's 2024. If you're tired of walking, to this place and that place and having to lift up your feet has become a burden, has become a hindrance in you getting forward in life. Taking steps has become lame. Ugh. You look at people walking and you're like, why can't we do it better? It's 2024, goddammit, and I put my mind to it and I solved this issue for once and for all. Uh, surgically attaching turtles to the bottom of your feet. No other place has, done, has, has ever done this before. But here at Glad You Made It, we offer medical procedures that have, that are under that are that, that are the tip of the spear of fucking medical procedures. That's right. Turtles attached surgically to the bottom of your feet, so that little turtle feet can start walking, and you just all you got to do is basically look at any direction, and they will do the walking for you. No more bending at the knees. No more getting arthritis at the ripe old age of 67 because you've been bending at the knees. No more getting arthritis on your knees because you're on your knees all the time, eating her out or giving him head. No more cracking at the elbows because you have just been working with your hands, going to town, making her squirt or making him come in your eye socket. No more getting a stiff neck because doing 69 while standing upside down, inside out is quite difficult. No more, no more of that. Walk to your favorite destinations by simply locking your knees into place. Uh, you don't need to, you don't need to bend at the knees. That's right. Surgically placed turtles on the bottom of your feet. Ladies and gents, today was the day of many malfunctions, many ups and downs, but we did it nonetheless. I'd like to say thank you for joining me once again. Where can you find these videos? Uh, on Instagram. Follow me there if you like. Chopped up into a little tiny little pieces for you. Follow me there if you like. Subscribe on the YouTube channel so you get the full length videos and then check out patreon.com slash Rob Sadry if you'd like to fiscally financially support the show when? Again, every Wednesday and Friday. So we'll be back. I'll be back. And hopefully you'll be back. Tell your family, friends, and loved ones. Uh, tell all your relatives. Tell all your friends. Tell, if you've got an enemy, tell your enemy. If you've got a foe, tell your foe. But like also make love. Why have enemies when you can have, when you can have friends? That's right. Tell everybody you know. Uh, make sure that's, that's at the forefront of everybody's thoughts. And I'll be back here again on Friday. In the meantime, have fun. Uh, and remember, malfunctions and technical difficulties are a part of life. And it can happen to the best of us. I love you all. I'll be back here again on Friday. Peace out. Get out of here. Go. Go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go.